In this video, I'm gonna show you my workflow of creating product photos like these using AI. So I received a couple of requests to make a video showing you the workflow of how I use AI to create product photos like these. And in this video, I'm gonna take you step by step through the workflow from start to finish. So it all starts with brainstorming ideas and creating prompts using ChatGPT. In ChatGPT, we're gonna first go to this Explore GPTs tab. We're gonna use this Midjourney MJ Prompt Generator V6. Now this is the brainstorming process that you're gonna use because ChatGPT will give you five prompts that you can then feed into Midjourney. Now today I'm taking photos of this Japanese soy sauce, so I'm gonna give ChatGPT some instructions and see what we can come up with. This is the prompt that I came up with. Give me five prompts for a stunning product photo of a tall soy sauce glass bottle in a Japanese kitchen setting. Make sure that the bottle is centered frame and quite close to the camera. The background environment should be slightly out of focus with bokeh elements of the Japanese kitchen environment. It will take a while for it to generate the prompts, but the good thing is that it has generated the prompts in the format that works right in the Midjourney Discord. Now if you're not familiar with Midjourney or how it works or don't have a Midjourney account, look it up on YouTube. It takes five minutes and then come back here. Now we can simply copy the prompts from ChatGPT and head over to Midjourney. So now over here in Midjourney we're simply gonna paste the prompts and see what we get. Now this is probably the most critical step in the workflow and how to really fine tune and get the look that you are looking for. So here you have to go maybe back and forth with ChatGPT and Midjourney a couple of times and ChatGPT will try to match that into the prompts that will then be used in Midjourney. I really like this photo with the soy bottle in front of the kitchen environment with the chef in the back. The smoke to the left of the bottle also gives off a really nice element that I think will work really well. Let's work with this one. So now that we have generated the photos in Midjourney, we're gonna try to take similar photos of our product in order to be able to blend the product and the background together in Photoshop later. Now it's important that you do it this way around because if you take photos of your product first and then try to create backgrounds that match your photos it's gonna be very hard to get that to look similar but if you generate the backgrounds first you can in camera try to really match up the shot so it fits into the background now the best thing about this workflow is that because we have generated the background with the help of ai our real studio set can be quite simple so here we have just one light and the background is simply a neutral wall and then we have our product that we're gonna photograph of course and I tried to find a similar surface to the one that was in the AI generated image because this will help when we try to blend the two images together in Photoshop. Now this over here is kind of the superpower of this workflow. So I use a Sony camera and Sony has an app called Imaging Edge Desktop. Now for this workflow this Imaging Edge app is actually really good because you can line up the AI generated image with the camera's viewfinder so I can in real time see how well the perspective and zoom and everything matches the AI generated background. Now this isn't necessary, but it really helps aligning that viewfinder with the AI generated image. I also took a couple of photos with an orange light lighting the backside of the bottle in order to get that similar glow that the AI background has. Now that we have generated the AI background and taken the photos to match that background, it's time to go into Photoshop and blend them together. Now for this part, I usually first edit my photo with a slight base grade, if you will, in Lightroom and then move over to Photoshop, blend the pictures together and then back to Lightroom doing some final adjustments in Photoshop. Shop, I use the neural filters feature which lets you super zoom the image. This just gives a little bit of more uh, detail and enlarges the image to the right resolution matching the photos we took with the camera. Now using the select subject feature I'm gonna remove the background and just make sure that the selection is the way I want it to be. I used the same selection to remove the background from both layers with and without the glow. And now with the eraser tool on a really soft brush, so hardness zero, I'm just gonna brush in the glow from the layer behind and simply place our bottle in 
inside the AI background. Now that we have removed the background from our photo and placed it into the AI background, it's time to go into the Neural Filters feature, Harmonization, in order to blend the two images together. So we're simply going to select the layer that we want to blend with, which in this case is of course the AI background. And now you can see that the colors on our product transforms to match the AI background better. Now it's not perfect, but with some tweaks we can get it to match even closer. By default it's at 75 and I think that's usually a bit too strong so I like to play around with the brightness and maybe drop the strength down to somewhere around 50 in order to get a look that is more natural to the photo and the environment that we're working with. Now as a last step, in Photoshop I also like to remove the product that was there originally in the AI background and maybe also play around with generative fill in order to blend the shadows of our product to the AI background in a more natural way. When you're satisfied with your edit, we'll bring it back to Lightroom just to make the final touches. Back in Lightroom I usually just go with the auto feature here adjust some of the sliders and what I also usually like to do is add some grain because it blends the two pictures better together when the grain is applied on the whole image at the same time. And that's basically it for the workflow. Let me know what you think about it and if there's something that I could improve I would gladly hear that as well. I think this is a cool way just for a small creator to create something that doesn't require you to go to a location or a big budget for a big set. You you just need your camera, some lights and your imagination. Here's the final picture, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.